Ciao belli, welcome to a new tutorial. So lately one of my friends called me up and she said, you know, I spent some money in Premiere Pro, but also want to create the thumbnails for my YouTube videos. And I don't want to spend extra money in Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop. Can I do that in Premiere Pro? Yes, let's do it today together in this tutorial, let's roll. First thing you wanna do is to go out there or in a studio and grab your photo that you're gonna use as a preview. If you have a camera, smartphone, whatever device you have, go out and take a few shots for your preview. The tip here is to use your phone in landscape mode, not portrait, landscape. Make sure you snap the photos at the highest resolutions you can on your phone. Also, you want to shoot in JPEG and not RAW or PNG because Adobe Premiere Pro doesn't support those formats. So JPEG is what you need. Let's say my YouTube video today is about my brand with you clothing. I just go out there and snap a few photos about the brand. We're now back in the studio. What we're gonna do next is to copy those photos into a new folder in our computer. And we're just gonna create a folder with the photos, drag it in, and next we're going to open Premiere Pro. From here we create a new project. Just press on the button New Project. We give it a name and we browse where to save the new project, which again is in the same folder as before. Press OK, choose, boom, ready to go and just press OK here in the settings. Now the next thing, we're going to import the photos in Premiere Pro by pressing Command I, choose the photo from the folder, import it and it's now in the project panel. We're just pressing Command N to create a new sequence. We go down to sequence presets and choose red, red 4K, Ultra HD 4K 16 by 9 the frame rate doesn't really matter so choose whatever you want give a name to your sequence and press OK and your sequence will appear in the project panel as well now what we're gonna do is to drag simply the photo in the new sequence on the timeline we select it we go to window and choose effect controls from here we can actually change the scale of the photo just to adapt it to the frame we also can move it just reframe it as you wish and we can rotate it, make sure the horizon level is on a straight line. We go to window now because we want to color grade it and choose the Lumetri color panel. From here we can choose some presets, they're called LUTs in the creative menu. We simply scroll through, choose if there's anything we like and to apply to our image we simply click on it and there you go. It, it appears in the program panel. But I don't want to do that, so Command Z to go back one step, and I'm going to do it manually. Let's go to the basic correction and uh, let's adjust the contrast, for example. The, we can change the exposure, the whites, to make the image a bit brighter. We can also enhance the blacks and the shadows of our image. Just play with the feathers up and down. You can play with the saturation, you can desaturate your photo, but once again, I wanna do it manually. So I just go down, I scroll down to curves. And in curves, I can adjust every single color as I want. First of all, I can adjust the black and whites once again. This is just a different way to do so. I scroll down and here, we can actually pick the color we want. With the color picker, I choose the orange of my hoodie, for example, because I want to saturate it a bit more. Let's bring the dot in the middle high. Uh, that's a bit too much, I guess. So let's bring it down and that's, that's a good saturation for me. So I keep it there. Take the color picker once again, go in the blue, and I want to bring the blues up just to create some more contrast. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that one. Okay, when you're happy, you can scroll down and for example, uh, add a vignette. If you want to add a vignette, you simply go at the bottom of the Lumetri color panel. You can, you can fade the amount, the midpoint, and also the roundness and the feather if you want to make your vignette a bit softer. Nice. What else we can do? We can add a text. If you want to add a text, then you go to the timeline Make sure you are at the beginning of the timeline, go to Window and select the Essential Graphics Panel. Make sure you are in Edit, 
choose new item, text, and a new text appear in the program panel. From here we scroll down, we go to the font, choose the font you want, and also the size of the font that you want. Nice, let's double click on the new text layer. And at this point, I choose the text I want to write. So simply type what you need. We're going to align it centrally, vertically, and horizontally in the Align and Transform panel. And also, we want to re-double click on it just to change the fill. So I can literally make the text any color I want. I can go red, blue, but I like it white. Let's go back to white. I can add a background to my text and simply you want to go to the fill, double click on it and choose the color of your background, orange in my case. I can choose the transparency or the opacity of this background. I got to 100% and also want to increase the size of it. Let's go to 50. And I'm quite happy with it actually. So I guess that's my thumbnail right there. What I'm going to do next is to go to the timeline, press Shift E, and in this way I can export a single frame in JPEG of this image I have on the timeline. I just delete from the name what I don't need, all these numbers, just useless. We're going to choose the format, JPEG, but you can also choose PNG if you want to, and browse where to save our image. I just create a new folder, YouTube thumbnail, press OK, and boom. I go back to my folders in Finder, go to the YouTube thumbnail folder, check it out, and that's your new thumbnail for your video. Simple as that. Quick tutorial today, I hope it helped out. Go and check my YouTube channel for more. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.